Hello and welcome back. It's been a while since I've done a proper sit down video, but I really wanted to do this one because I remember uh, how it was for me when I started dipping my toes into metalsmithing and the amount of resources and tools available were so overwhelming. I had no idea what I actually needed to invest in just to get started. So my hope is that you walk away from this video with an actionable list of items. I categorize them so that first we talk about actual tools that sit on my bench that live there. They're, you know, smaller things like a hammer. Next, we will move on to flex shaft and talk about all the attachments that are um, very good and useful. And lastly, we will talk about my torch setup, which will include, of course, the torch that I use, uh, the pickle that I use, the flux that I use and the firing bricks that I use and where I got them. So hopefully this will help. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and let's get into it. Okay, so first things first, you will need a bench. Um, definitely you could use a table that is sturdy enough, but the reason why I recommend you get a bench is because of the height. It will help with your neck and back position and also because of the storage. It comes with perfect drawers to keep your tools in, it's gonna help you keep everything more, more tidy, and it just makes sense to invest in a bench because you will need it in time anyway. Number two is your pack, bench pack, right here. So that usually comes with the bench. You can get different attachments like this so that you can easily remove it, but you absolutely don't have to. I didn't have this for a long time. I just had the peg that came with the bench and it worked perfectly. You can definitely get by with just that. Our next tool, which is the jeweler's saw. It looks like this. You can get a frame, any frame you like really. It's just gonna depend on your personal preference. Um, I would say don't skimp when it comes to the saw blades. So this is where you should invest in good blades. Um, I will link below the ones I think are very decent from Rio and the ones I use and so the blades you can just place in of course any frame so the frame is not as important but the blades very important also make sure they never rust because if they rust they will not perform as well next we have the hammers uh, two hammers in my opinion are the most important one is a rawhide mallet looks like this and that will help you form metal when you don't want to leave marks so you don't want to texturize you want to make sure it doesn't doesn't leave any kind of mark so this will be your best friend for forming it's called a rawhide mallet and uh, you will also need a regular hammer which is either a goldsmith hammer or this is a chasing and repoussé hammer actually but I just I guess I learned to work with it early on and now I use it for pretty much everything, forming, tex texturizing, um, so many things. So you will definitely need something like this, a chasing and repousse hammer or a goldsmith crossbeam hammer, any of those. You will need a steel block that looks like this. It looks like this and this is your surface. This is your work surface when you're forming the metal. Uh, not always, because sometimes it will be important that it doesn't leave a mark again and it will flatten the surface that is on the block as you hammer, of course. But uh, for the most part, this is what you will use for a lot of the for forming and you will definitely need a good block. Next, we have the half round file. It looks like this. It's a hand file, so it's a bigger one, not a needle file. And uh, usually they come with wooden handles, so you can actually hold them properly now funny story i actually just learned to use it like this and now i prefer it without the handle but you might want to put a wooden handle on it so that it's more ergonomic on your hand this will be your best friend for filing uh, any surface really so of course because it's half round you can use it on the inside of the rings you can use it on a flat surface it works either way an absolute basic and you will need it moving on to needle files which come usually in a packet like this and you have all sorts of shapes so you have rectangular square round triangular oval um, half round as well so these are needle files it's pretty much the same thing only for smaller surfaces and for surfaces that maybe don't fit the half round shape next you will definitely need a pair of tweezers i like these pointy tweezers 
Uh, I use it. I use it for absolutely everything. Even use it to pick up solder instead of the solder pick. I don't really. I don't really use the solder pick. Uh, I use this instead. I use it to soak my piece into a borax solution. I use it for absolutely everything, and uh, I recommend you get a pair of these or even two or three pairs. You will always need these. And this is how you will for you will be forming your rings. So most of you maybe even have this already, especially if you're doing any sort of wire work. But uh, you, this is an absolute necessity. You will need this, uh, and uh, of course you want to get that in stainless steel. They also come in wood and aluminum, but you don't want to use those because you will not be able to hammer metal on those. Those are more for display purposes. So get one like this. And next we have a ruler. And I would suggest you get a metal one like this because it's just more accurate, it doesn't lose its shape or doesn't lose the markings on it, so it's, it's a very good ruler, I've had this for years. And of course, you will have your um, pliers, um, cutters and such. So we, we got the bench shears, then you have your round nose pliers, very handy for forming metal. Um, then you have your clip. Well, I call them clippers, but I don't I don't even know if that's the proper name for it. But I use this to cut solder so that you can make little uniform pieces with it. It's very handy. And of course, your trusty just flat nose pliers that you can use for pretty much everything. I got this, I want to say about 10 years ago, maybe even more. And they still work perfectly. I mean, they don't look very good, but they still work perfectly. And this is probably my favorite tool I own. Here we have a bezel pusher. That you will need if you want to set stones so if you never tried stone setting i'm assuming you're going to start setting capuchons because those are much easier than faceted stones and the way to do that is you make a bezel you put the stone in and then since the bezel is standing upright you have to push it onto the surface of the stone so for that we use a bezel pusher like this is it last but not least no we have two more okay you will need a brush uh, this I use for pretty much everything. Um, you can use this for uh, your flux. So before soldering you would put some flux on it and then put it on your piece. Also I use this to pick up solder so that I also get some flux on the solder pieces. And last but not least you need sandpaper. Got this at Home Depot I believe and you can get them in all kinds of grids. So 200, 400, 600, 800, whatever have you. You can do any finish really with a sandpaper. It will take some elbow grease to achieve a good finish but it's absolutely possible and you don't need a motorized tool to do this. So next up we have our flex shaft. It will do everything for you. You can polish with it, you can, um, you can use separating discs with it, you can uh, drill with it, you need a steady hand, but that is it. And it will do everything for you. It's a great, great tool. So what I, uh, the attachments that I got for the flex shaft was the polishing wheels from Rio. And you have the white one, that is uh, the very coarse grit one. The next one, we have the black one that I usually use for cleaning up the solder seams and just the edges of my piece. So this is a very good one, a versatile one. I use this one the most and all the time. I use these silicone wheels, they're very easy to use and you can achieve almost a mirror polish with it if you use them. If you use them all so you do have to buy them all and they come in an assortment like this they're called 3m bristle disc it looks like this and it's a little assortment you have all different colors and it tells you exactly what the grid is and in what order to use them um, next you will want to get some drill bits so you can definitely drill with your flex shaft uh, it will need, you will need some practice, uh, you have to have a steady hand and you have to make sure you're holding it very much upright because it's so easy to just tilt it ever so slightly and usually for some reason we have a tendency to tilt things toward ourselves when we hold it so be mindful of that and practice keeping it completely upright. Okay, so last but not least we have the torch setup. Now I use a acetylene tank and that's the one I learned on, that's the one that's easiest for me and I believe it is the simplest one. So it uses acetylene of course. You will need a tank B for that, B refers to the size of the tank, it has to be B. It has to have a regulator on it, you have to have a hose and of course a torch tip. Um, 
the one that the whole setup that I use is called the Smith Torch from Rio. When you buy it, it comes with tip size double zero, which is good for nothing, pretty much. So you will need at least a size two, tip size two, and I would also suggest getting tip size either zero or one, whichever you prefer. Flux. That is basically a paste or any other solution that you put on your piece that will prevent fire scale and it will help solder flow. Uh, the one that most people use is the Handy Flux. It's a white paste. I will put a picture of it. Now, I don't use the Handy Flux because I just prefer putting my piece in borax first, which will prevent the fire scale. And then for solder flow, I use T Flux. And for me, that works much better. It's much more efficient. It's much cleaner. Now, in order to remove the flux residue after you're done soldering, you will need a pickle, pickling solution, which I recommend you use the one from Rio again. It's a, it comes in a powder form and you dissolve it in distilled water. And uh, you can use it without heat, it will work. However, if you put it in something like a slow cooker, like a mini slow cooker and put it on medium heat or low heat, it will work much better. Fire insulating bricks, they're called, I believe, K23. And you can usually get them wherever you get your clay uh, pottery supply things because those, I believe, are the ones they also use inside of kilns. Hi there, it's me a little later editing the video and I realized I forgot to mention two very important things. Number one is ventilation. You want to have good ventilation at all costs. Uh, best thing is to do it right underneath a window. But if that you don't have, you can maybe Google and DIY good ventilation ducts that you can uh, set up for yourself. You definitely don't want to be breathing in all the fumes. And the other thing is eye protection. So whenever you use the flex shaft, please, please make sure you have eye protection on because uh, it takes nothing but a second to do some real damage because if anything gets caught in the flex shaft, it flies pretty much like a bullet. So please, please always wear eye protection when you use the flex shaft. Um, that's that. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it really helped you and I believe it is a good list of items. This is all the stuff that I got on day one and I still use to this day. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.